First scene, Eden. Exterior, forest path to isolated lake, night. Edie, 17, naked, wrapped in a white cloth, dashes between the trees. Her necklace of bells shakes out soft jingles. She slows near the edge of the dark lake. Clasping her necklace to stop the bells ringing, she sees John, 18, also semi-naked, standing in a white loincloth with arms folded, waiting at the water's edge. A high fence topped with razor wire extends in a circle into the water. Mosquitoes whine in the moonlit, sweaty air. Edie clears her throat. John turns to her. What is it this time? Edie runs past him into the water and wades toward the fence. She stops, up to something forbidden, laughs. I'm going to climb over the fence. No, get out before someone comes. Edie falls backward into the water, vanishes underneath. Seconds go by. Edie doesn't reappear. John begins to panic. Edie's hands emerge, flail briefly in the air, drowning. Edie! John dives under the water. He surfaces. Edie's nowhere. He calls for her. No answer. He dives under again and after a few seconds breaks the surface with Edie limp in his arms. She suddenly comes alive and clings to him, gasping for breath and laughing. <laughs> you saved me! Still laughing, she kisses him clumsily on the mouth. That's not funny. You liked me. I felt that. As she tries again, John releases her into the water. Not until tomorrow. Edie clings to him, tempting him with her gaze. No one has to know. Edie pulls on John, floating slowly towards him. Hypnotized by lust, John lets her kiss him for a second before he turns his face aside. Edie softly reaches for him. It's only lips and tongues, John. He pushes her away. Do anything that makes babies, just a bit of. Do you know what Father says? One sin leads to another. Edie goes quiet as John climbs out of the lake. He hides his erection by turning away. You made me sin. You wanted me to. He keeps his back turned angrily. Get out the water. Go to bed. Edie looks out through the fence over the lake. Now, Edie. She faces off against him. Maybe I'll go somewhere else. You wouldn't dare. You could die in seconds out there. And you'd marry Lillian instead? She's a good girl. John looks back. I know. I'm marrying you. We're going to Pipe Paradise together. Edie nods, then a small, playful smile escapes. She wades towards him, revealing her body, shyly seductive. Paradise. John quickly snaps away. Don't be disgusting. He stomps away down the path. Edie, humiliated, watches. Then she swims towards the fence that cuts her off from the dark lake. She looks up at the razor wire top and sighs. It's impossible to escape, she knows that. Like a kid kicking off the side of a swimming pool, Edie pushes off with her feet against the fence, swims back to it, kicks away, zigzagging across the fence, until near where a tree leans over the lake, Edie's foot goes through the fence underwater. She winces. Ow! Edie feels around with her foot. Something surprises her. Then. Excites her. She gulps a mouthful of air. She dives underwater. Edie reaches towards us through wire. As her left hand meets no resistance, Edie's eyes widen. She's discovered a rip in the wire fence. She pulls at the wire. It comes away, leaving a large gap. Struggling to stay underwater, Edie blows out bubbles as she shoots toward through the gap and exterior lake night, other side of fence, continuous, bursts to the surface. She swims in place, staring across the lake. Elated at first, she takes in the dark trees on the other side. A gust of wind runs through them, ghostly. Edie gulps air, fearful. She quickly dives again. Back inside the fence, Edie surfaces again and races to the shore. She sluices herself dry with her hands. Her left foot bleeds from the cut of the wire. Wringing out her wet hair, she hurries back the way she came. Interior, female, sleeping quarters, night to dawn, transition. Edie peers into the room full of bunk beds and the soft sounds of five other women of various ages who sleep semi-naked, shrouded by mosquito nets. Judith, 40s, Edie's mother, has been waiting up for her daughter. She speaks softly. Again? Edie kneels down by her. I couldn't sleep, Mom. I was hot. It's the jitters, Munchkin. You'll be fine after tomorrow. Say your affirmations. Edie nods. 
Judith watches as Evie tiptoes to her bunk bed and lies insomniac, staring upwards. Bunk bed. Evie listens to the breathing of the other women. She mouths words silently. We hear what's in her head. I'm grateful for this garden. I'm grateful for the mercy of God who brought me here in my mother's womb. I am grateful for Father Fidel, her spiritual guide. Evie stares up at the ceiling, sleepless, afraid. For this is the only place that will be spared when the 13th comes from the water and the big storm washes the earth of sin. She loses track of her affirmation. She, imag she imagines the worst. The reciting tone stops. The storm had broken while I was outside the wire. I'd be dead. Edie retorts to herself, reassuring herself, 100% teenager. But it didn't, so who cares? She exhales. It's twilight now. God better bring the storm soon so my life can finally start. As Edie's eyes flutter closed, the light rises. Rhythmic bells, then excited female voices, rhythmic clapping and humming wake her. Edie opens her eyes to bright daylight and, smiling, celebrating naked women who surround the bed, singing. Judith is center stage among them. Titles over.